So in this video, we're going to talk about how we build spatial models, uh, how, basically how we take process models and build in uh, spatial adjacency for block reference data into our process models. So the framework we're going to take here uh, is going to be called the conditional autoregressive model or the CAR model. Um, and it's as a framework very analogous to what we did uh, for AR1 uh, time series model and our, our general model for spatial point data. So we're going to say y at any location i is going to be come first from what's predicted by our process model. So what our process model predicts at i, so that could be anything from just a mean to a, you know, a complex nonlinear model. So it's, you know, put any process model in here we want. And again, in, in this context, often, you know, we are trying to build uh, realistic process models to describe, how, you know, what we think explains why, and then we're going to include these later parts, the spatial autocorrelation, and then the nugget error in these models to account for uh, any residual uh, error, either independent residual error in the nugget or spatially autocorrelated error uh, in this term here involving the Ws. And this term, including the Ws, you know, takes on a uh, kind of an expected form of a, based on what we looked at uh, in the last slides and also based that what we looked at when we went through the math for um, uh, uh, how we make predictions with Krieging and that there's a, you know, what the, what the residual error is at the other locations other than the one we're interested in uh, weighted and, and doing a weighted error average of those errors based weighted based on uh, spatial proximity, which is very analogous to how we, you know, in Krieging, you know, we predict, you know, the new predictions to a new location involve the predictions from the process model and then adjusting those predictions based on uh, whether points that are nearby are tending to be above average or below average relative to what's predicted by the model. It's worth noting that if your data is a perfect raster, you know, it's a perfectly square grid data, uh, which would happen a lot with uh, things like um, remotely sensed data, um, where you get image raster data. Uh, th this is essentially equivalent to the Markov random field model, um, where we had uh, a process model that involved a component of, of weighting what's going on uh, at your neighbors. And it's also directly analogous to this AR1 and this spatial point data. So at the bottom here, we again had our, our spatial point data model that again had a trend, which maps directly to the process model here, has a spatial error, uh, which here is based on spatial uh, proximity rather than a spatial covariance matrix, and this nugget residual error. So really, it's, it's not a, a radically new concept. The, the biggest difference we're seeing with uh, spatial Block reference data is really just how we define that proximity matrix is slightly different than how we define a spatial covariance matrix when we're dealing with point data. So like we did with that spatial creating model, we're going to take this overall model and we're going to rewrite it uh, in terms of a, a multivariate normal distribution that involves uh, a vector of observations, a vector of predictions from our process model, and then a, a covariance matrix that includes both the spatial, uh, spatially autocorrelated component, this W tilde, which again is that W adjacency matrix normalized uh, so that each row sums to one. And then this identity matrix, you know, which when multiplied out by sigma uh, provides that nugget. So we have this nugget component and we have this uh, spatially autocorrelated component. We can also see that this, uh, again, the, the shape of these equations is very similar to what we saw in time series models, where in time series model, we've had a, you know, y at some time, what's predicted by the process model, the sim some of the rows over the adjacent points, plus some um, uh, additional residual error, and that worked out to being, you know, a multivariate normal with some mean predicted by the model, and this sigma, uh, and then this, uh, is one over row squared is very similar to this I minus W tilde 
uh, in the denominator here. And even the squared, because remember in, in the W matrix, uh, you know, locations show up twice. Um, a lot of what we do in, in car models, we could implement using the exact same approaches we did uh, in the previous sets of le lectures of how we implement uh, uh, covariance models for, for geostatistics. You know, it's basically the big difference is how you define that distance matrix is different, but once that distance matrix is defined, a lot of the remaining code is very similar. Uh, but it's also worth pointing out that at, at one point in the past, um, the folks developing the, the bugs language, which is uh, very similar to the Jags Lake language, but works through a, a, a graphical user's, user's interface instead of uh, being kind of linked to by R, uh, actually developed a, a variant called GeoBugs, which was designed for this these sort of conditional autoregressive models and actually had the capacity uh, to load up uh, shapefile-based data and to uh, actually put uh, you know, a car down as a prior distribution on a process or a parameter. So it actually had uh, car priors as uh, ways of writing down models in JAGS that, that actually allowed you to write a model in JAGS that was much simpler than having to implement a few a, a full geospatial model. And, and under the hood, it was somewhat optimized for doing those calculations. Uh, to my knowledge, uh, you know, analogous uh, things have not been developed. Um, for other statistical Bayesian languages, but I'll also note that there's a, a, a lot going on uh, in uh, spatial stats and spatiotemporal stats in, in Bayes that uh, I have not been able to keep up with. So it's quite like possible that, that better tools have emerged. <laughs>